You may wish to pause the video at this point in order to read the problem statement and come up with your own attack for a solution. Alrighty, so this problem asks us to do several different things. We have an almost ideal ranking cycle. The only way it's not ideal is that the inlet of the turbine is not a saturated vapor. But other than that, it is an ideal ranking cycle. We're asked to sketch the TS diagram, define the pump power, the heat transfer rate into the boiler, power out of the turbine, etc., and finally find the cycle efficiency. So let's start with the TS diagram. Um, to make this a little bit easier, what we're going to do is we're going to label uh, the following points around the cycle. So we're going to make the inlet of the pump 1, the exit of the pump 2, and so on around the cycle. Here's the TS diagram. The TS diagram uh, starts at point 1, which is a uh, saturated liquid at a pressure of 10 kilopascals. Going from 1 to 2, you'll notice that the line is straight up. This is a constant entropy process. How did I know that? Well, I'm told that it's an ideal ranking cycle, except for that inlet of the turbine. And ideal implies that the pump is ideal. Ideal pumps run adiabatically, there's no heat transfer, and ideal pumps also run um, reversibly. Those two things mean that they're also isentropic. So the exit of the pump has the same entropy as the inlet of the pump. Got a much different pressure, but the same entropy. So that's how I know that state point two is directly above state point one. Going from two to three for an ideal cycle, we have no drop in pressure. So the boiler pressure coming in, the boiler pressure leaving exactly the same. There's state point three, given to me in the problem statement. And just like in the pump, state point four has got the same entropy as the inlet of the turbine. It's uh, S3 and S4 exactly the same. Much lower pressure, of course, but diff are the same entropy. Uh, the reasons are the same. An ideal turbine operates reversibly and adiabatically. Accounting of entropy would tell me that that also means isentropically, same entropy. And then finally, from 4 to 1, we have another constant pressure step. No drop in pressure of the fluid running through the condenser. So there's my entire cycle, the TS diagram. Very useful thing to have before I start throwing equations at it, because it gives me a visual way of determining what the different phases are. And it also helps tremendously when I go to calculate properties at the various state points. Now, you'll notice that I've written on there that I don't know where state point 4 is. Well, I do know something about it. I know what its pressure is, and I know that it's directly below state point 3. But what I don't know is what the phase is. As I've drawn it here, it looks like it's a superheated vapor. It could turn out to be a saturated mixture and be underneath the vapor dome. That depends on where exactly state point 3 is. Okay, so state point 3, I've drawn it way up here. It looks like a superheated vapor. 3 might really be here. This were drawn to scale, and state point four could be here, a mixture. So I don't know yet, but I'll find that out as I uh, throw my equations at the problem. Moving right along, let's find the power into the pump at this state point. Okay, so for the pump uh, power, all I'm going to do is define a system uh, around the pump itself and throw conservation of energy at it. So one inlet, one exit system, operating a steady state. This is the thing I'm trying to find, W dot N to the pump. There's conservation of energy. Already reduced it a little bit. It's operating at a steady state. There's no heat transfer. It's adiabatic. I wrote plus dot 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 to indicate that I'm ignoring potential and kinetic energy effects. There's only one mass flow rate. So mass conservation is implied here by the fact that I haven't written any summation signs and written only one mass flow rate. And I solved that guy for W dot into the pump is the mass flow rate times the increase in enthalpy. Pretty straightforward. Um, from here on out, finding the power into the pump is a matter of finding properties. In order to find any property for a simple compressible substance, I need to know the value of two independent intensive properties. Tell me what the two properties are that are known at one that gives me the enthalpy at one. So I'll give you a second to think about that and see if you come up with the same thing I did. Okay, I hope what you came up with was this. 
you know the pressure and the quality at state point one. You know that it's a saturated liquid. If you had to put a number on a specific property that indicates it's a saturated liquid, it would be X is equal to zero. So knowing the pressure and the quality gives us the H of state point one. Now finding the number for that can take on many different forms. You can look it up in the steam tables. You can use a piece of software like Ease, or you can use uh, other pieces of software. What I did is I used uh, a piece of software that the Ease developer makes as a freely distributable uh, standalone program called the Property Calculator. So you just tell it two independent properties, what the uh, stuff is, in this case Steam, and it spits out all the other independent properties. So using that uh, Property Calculator, I got 191.7 kilojoules per kilogram for H1. I have to uh, now calculate H2. So as long as I'm looking up properties for state point one, I'm going to look up the entropy at state point one also. I know the same two independent properties, pressure and the quality, and I get that the entropy is 0.6489 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So you might be asking yourself, why did I bother to look up the entropy at state point one when what I needed was enthalpy? Well, the answer is because when I want to find H2, I need two properties for that also. And the properties that I know are the pressure, 8 megapascals, and the entropy, the entropy being the same as state point 1. So if I had skipped ahead and tried to find enthalpy at state point 2, I probably would have backtracked to this point anyway. So the two properties are 8 megapascals and 0.6489 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. The enthalpy at state point 2 is 199. 0.8 kilojoules per kilogram. So with the value of both the enthalpies, I have what I need in order to find the power into a pump. Okay, again, the link between these two is that the enthalpy, or the entropy at state point two is the same as the entropy at state point one. Okay, so plug in and chug in, I get W dot into the pump, 8.1 kilowatts approximately. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. Uh, we often are concerned of, um, about quantities called specific power, things like that, where I'm looking at the power per unit mass flow rate through a system. In this case, my mass flow rate is only one kilogram per second, so if I divide through by m dot, I get the same number for specific power, little w, but the units are different. Okay? Pay very close attention to that. It's 8.058, but it's kilojoules per kilogram now. If I were really anal retentive about this, I would write this as a kilowatt per a kilogram per second. That's what it really represents, power per unit mass flow rate. It looks like work per unit mass, but strictly speaking, it's power per unit mass flow rate. And so the analysis of the pump is complete. And now I'm going to move on to the boiler. So the good news about the boiler and the turbine and the condenser that comes after this is that the method of attack is exactly the same. The specific assumptions are different from component to component, but the method of attack is the same. So here's a steady one inlet, one exit uh, open system. And I apply conservation of energy to it. Still steady state. This time there's no power. Boilers don't have moving parts. You don't plug them in. Um, but I don't get rid of the heat transfer. In fact, that's what I'm looking for. Once again, I've said that there's no kinetic and potential energies. One inlet, one exit. So there's only one mass flow rate. So I get a very similar looking equation as with the pump, um, but I'm solving it for heat transfer rate instead. So the heat transfer rate in the boiler is the mass flow rate uh, multiplied by the enthalpy increase across the boiler. Or if I look at the specific heat transfer rate, heat transfer rate per unit mass flow rate, I get it as H3 minus H2. As before, I can get numbers for this as soon as I find values for the property. H2 is already known. I need to find H3. The independent properties I have for state point three are temperature and pressure. Both of those are given in the problem statement. This is a superheated vapor using your favorite software or your steam tables, whatever uh, floats your boat. You can go find H3. I got 3881 kilojoules per kilogram. Actually, I should pause at this point to warn you about a, a very important thing. It's perfectly okay to use anything you want to find your properties, but you have to be consistent. Do not use steam tables in one part of a problem and software in another part, because the difference in enthalpies is really the thing that has any meaning. The absolute number is in some sense arbitrary, and it depends on the reference state where you think, say things are equal to zero. 
Okay, so use anything you want, but don't switch between one source and another within the context of one problem because you're potentially going to uh, have big troubles with that and your numbers aren't going to make sense. Okay, so with that little aside, let's come back to the problem. Plugging and chugging, I get that the heat transfer per unit mass flow rate into the boiler is 3,682 kilojoules per kilogram. At this point, continuing the problem, it's all pretty much the same. I've got a turbine that's also an open system operating at steady state with no kinetic and potential energy effects. I solve it for the power out of the turbine, and I get the mass flow rate times the difference in enthalpy once again. You'll notice there is a slight difference in this equation compared to the other ones, and that is I put minus w dot out here rather than plus w dot in. So I've abandoned my sign convention that work is or power is positive into my system in this case because I knew the direction of the power. The purpose of a turbine is to produce power. I know it comes out. I might as well take that into account from the get-go. So I wrote minus W dot out. In any case, it's the difference in enthalpy as before. And as before, I need two properties to find all the other properties. H3 is already known. H4 I find because I know the pressure at 4 and, like with the pump, the uh, entropy at state point 4 is the same as the entropy coming into the device. So as a pit stop on the way to finding H4, I find S3 first. The entropy at 700 Celsius at 8 megapascals is 7.28. And finally, the enthalpy at state point 4 is the enthalpy at 10 kilopascals, and S4 is equal to S3, equal to 0.7, or equal to 7.28 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. All right, so I find the number for that, about 2,300 kilojoules per kilogram, plug those into my W equation, and I find my power out of the turbine per unit mass flow rate. You'll notice uh, that the, in, or the enthalpy that I have here, 2307, if I compared that to H sub G in my steam tables, I would find that it is less than the saturated uh, vapor value of enthalpy at 10 kilopascals. So the original diagram that I drew that showed this as a superheated vapor is incorrect. It turns out it is, in fact, a mixture. Remember, the test, or one of the tests for phase, is to compare a specific property to the saturated values. For anything like entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, anything that's got a big letter and a little letter corresponding to each other, if they're in between the F value and the G value, it's a mixture. Above the G value, it's a saturated or it's a superheated vapor, and below the F value, it is a uh, compressed liquid. So my original guess was wrong. This is, in fact, um, a saturated mixture. And finally, I can look at the boiler. So we won't bore you with the nitty-gritty details of this. The method of attack is exactly the same, apply conservation of energy. Now, once again, I know the heat transfers out, so I abandoned my sign convention. Um, no additional properties to look up. Those are already found. I can find Q per unit mass flow rate is 2115 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, I could have, if I wanted, used a different equation completely to find Q for the, or the condenser. And that would be, uh, in this case, the Q for the boiler minus the W for the turbine and plus the W for the pump. Why does that equation work and where does it come from? Okay, I hope what you said, or what you came up with conceptually, was that also is conservation of energy, but for a completely different system. The system consists of the entire cycle taken at once. So if I draw my dotted lines around that, I find that my Q's all add up to my W's. The net Q into the cycle is equal to the net W out. And I found all the Q's and W's for the cycle except this one Q condenser. So our conservation energy for the entire cycle will give me exactly the same answer. And this is usually a good check when you're working cycle problems, is when you get to that last component or that last step, calculate it two different ways and see if you get the same number. If you don't, you've made a mistake. Okay, so the next part of the problem asks us to find the uh, efficiency of the cycle. 
the efficiency is a measure of performance, a measure of performance being a benefit to a cost. In this case, the benefit is the net power out divided by the uh, cost, which is the amount of heat transfer into the cycle. Notice that there's no net on Q dot here. And the reason for that should be obvious based on our last discussion. The net power out and the net QN are exactly the same number. This number is 1 if that is net, no matter what cycle I'm looking at. So thermodynamically, I pay for Q into the boiler, and I don't pay for Q out of the condenser. That's from an energy and a thermodynamic standpoint. Uh, in other ways, I am paying for Q out of the condenser, but energetically, I'm only taking into account what I pay for uh, in thermodynamic sense in the bottom here. In terms of the numbers that I've already calculated, I can find this efficiency by looking at the specific power out divided by the specific heat transfer in, and that uh, net power out is the turbine minus the pump, numbers that I already have, plug and chug. I get that the cycle efficiency is a little under 43%, which is actually pretty good. All right. And finally, let's take a look at the TS diagram, which looks like this. So I've made a correction here for state point four being a saturated mixture rather than a superheated vapor. Okay, so that does it for the first couple parts of this problem. The next part of this problem is to do all of this again, but change what the boiler pressure is. And then finally, we're going to work the problem one more time, taking into account non-ideal pumps and non-ideal uh, turbine concepts. Okay, But we're going to leave that for a separate video. Your brain is probably full at this point. So we'll see you next time. Enjoy.